guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am obviously here to answer all of your questions. Um, I have my computer pulled up right here. This is my stool that I use to reach the top shelves of my library because I'm a short individual, um, but it's, it's serving a separate purpose today. So I have the video pulled up here that have questions. I have my phone charging over here because it's kind of dead. So I'll get to those questions separately, like just Instagram questions. Um, so I think I'm going to get into answering because I anticipate talking for a very long time. I feel like today's a good chit chat day. It has decided to start monsooning. Last video I posted, it was like in the midst of the mugginess of late summer here and it has since changed. It is now a lovely like 70 to 80 degree temperature range, which is very pleasant, except it's apparently just going to monsoon nonstop. Like if you guys are anywhere like kind of on the east coast around Pennsylvania where I am, you're probably experiencing the same thing I am where it's literally been raining for like three days straight and when you look at your forecast, it's never ending. So it seems like a good day to just like kind of sit on the floor of my library and chat with you people. I've got, I've got a cup of tea here in case I feel like spilling it. If you catch my drift, is that what the youngins are saying these days? I don't really understand youngin slang anymore, so there we go. Spilling the tea. Do you get it? Did you get my joke? Okay, I'm just gonna go. Okay, let's see. Shy Girl Now 2011 it says, how did you meet your fiance? Oh, I feel like I should totally have him here. He's at work right now, uh, so I can't. But interestingly enough, we met online. And I feel like we're in a day and age now where it doesn't really have the stigma to say that you met somebody online anymore. I feel like in 2018, it's fairly common to make friends on the internet or use dating websites. Um, at the time, we met almost probably about six years ago now, and I was working as a barn manager at my barn that I work at, like a racehorse rehab facility. And it was in the middle of Amish country, like pretty, pretty deep into it, as in all of our direct neighbors, everyone on our road was Amish. So that was kind of a trying time. At that point, I was 23, 22, 23 ish. And I didn't know how to make friends in a community where there was literally nobody who really clearly spoke my language or wasn't Amish. Um, so I kind of joined a lot of online dating websites actually to just make friends in the area and it worked really well, surprisingly, but Randy was actually, fun fact, the very first person to send me a message and I guess the rest was history. So surprisingly enough, we met online. There's nothing wrong with that. Second question there is, is there an animal you don't have, but you wish you did? Real and fantasy. Oh man, all of them. I want a raccoon or a pet skunk really bad, like really bad. I've always wanted one of those where like you take the musk gland out of the skunk or you just like domesticate a raccoon. They're hilarious. I want one so bad. Um, so for a house pet, I want one of those. Outside in the barn, let's see. I want an alpaca. You can't have just one, so I would have to get two. Um, I recently have really, really been wanting a Cooney Cooney piglet just to raise as a pet, not for me, just literally as a pet because they are precious. I'll put a picture of one right here. Look how cute they are. I need one in my life. Fantasy, well, I guess the easy answer for me would be a Pegasus because it's a horse that flies. Like that's pretty much all that I would need in life. But I feel like also, I mean, a dragon would be pretty bitchin' to have because it's a, it's a dragon. So there are all of my answers, that was not. Uh, short answer. Okay, Aaron King asks, you are stuck on a deserted island with three fictional characters. Which characters would you want them to be? Okay, here we go. I guess if I'm thinking in terms of survival or getting off of the island, I would want, I would want, I think I would want Lysandra from Throne of Glass, the Throne of Glass series, because hello, she could literally just like transform into like a dolphin and we could just swim away. That would be cool. She could literally transform into like anything that could like carry me off of the island. So she would be like an easy answer. Um, I feel like I would obviously want Azrael from Akatar because I mean, he's my favorite. And I feel like he could use his little shadows to like go get us help. 
But again, he can just fly, so he could just fly us off the island. I'd be okay being swept up in his arms and flown away. That'd be fine. And I guess a third one? I feel like at that point I just need entertainment because I'm good for getting off of the island. Let's see, who would be entertaining to have on the island with those two? I'm gonna say Severo from the Red Rising series because Severo is like my favorite character from that series and I feel like he would just be constant entertainment. Like he would just get into so much trouble and he would just get into so many fights with both of them so it would just be like constant entertainment. Also I feel like he's pretty good at surviving so I think if we couldn't get off the island I think he would be pretty great at like hunting and gathering and supplying for us. So, those three. Witchy Crafty Gal asks, when slash why did you get into raising goats? I absolutely love them, by the way. Me too. Um, okay, so I guess as far as animal questions, I've kind of decided because a lot of you have asked about them, I think I'm gonna do a completely separate video where you meet all of my animals because that's probably my most requested video to do is just like a meet my goats video where I go through and like tell you their names, their stories, or just all of my animals in general because I have seven pets right now. Um, so I'm gonna do that separate, so for like factual stuff about them, I'll do that, I guess. Starbucks Book Lover says, I have two questions. You seem to really love YA novels, and I love them too, great. Um, but besides YA novels, what are your favorite genres of books and why? Um, I clearly read a lot of YA if you can't tell, but I actually have kind of read a lot. Like I have a fairly like eclectic taste of books. I guess favorite genre in general is fantasy because that's generally what I like reach for and I feel like my favorite books of all time are fantasy because I feel like those are just so epic and exciting in my mind. So fantasy in general, but I do actually read a lot of like adult fantasy and I'm branching more and more into it. I'm getting there. And if you could be any character from any books you have read, which would you be? Besides Feyre from Akafas. You know me so well. Who would I be? Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna try and steer away from answers that revolve around Harry Potter and Akatar because those are my go-tos, because obviously my main answer would be literally anybody from the Harry Potter series because I just wanna go to Hogwarts. I wanna live in that world, hello. So let me think who I would actually want to be. Like what world would I wanna live in? Can I literally just say like a random person who lives in Valaris because that would be cool? Again, I'm in Akatar. okay. Stray from Akatar, Chelsea. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna change my answer. Um, I want to be, shoot, what's her name? The main chick from Onyx and Ivory. I just read this. I should know her name. Kate, right? Trader Kate. That was that book. Um, because she can communicate with animals. So her, definitely her. That sounds awesome. Jerza Fjord? I, oh, sorry. Sorry about that one. That one was rough. Um, asks, what book character have you related to the most? Um... <laughs> Um, well, I'm gonna lean right towards Fangirl and Eliza, like Kath from Fangirl and Eliza, just because they're both really nerdy girls who have really bad social anxiety and would rather just kind of live online in their fandoms, because, hello, relatable. Okay, and the second question is, have you ever read any manga series? You know, I don't think that I technically have. I read a lot of graphic novels, and surprisingly, I watch a lot of anime, but I've never, like, crossed the two. Um, I remember trying to read one a long, long time ago when I was a teenager because I think like my mom had it in the house. I want to say it was like fruit, Fruits Basket or something. I don't know. I would love to get the manga of Death Note because I love Death Note, so I feel like I should just own that and read it. But for some reason, I never did. There's not like any particular reason why I didn't. I just never got into it. Next question is from Alyssa Carpio. And it says, you mentioned on one of your videos that you're a horse girl. What's their name and how does it feel to ride a horse? Uh, amazing. My only horse that I owned, like I said, is Hercules, my mini. And yes, I do just kind of sit on him from time to time. He's kind of like a couch. He's very comfortable, but he's not really feasibly rideable because he only is like hip high. Basically riding a horse, I feel like if you're a horse person, like it's in your blood. I feel like you grow up being a horse person or you're not. And I feel like if you're a horse person, trying to describe the feeling of riding is very hard. Like, it, for me, the feeling of like sitting down into a saddle, like when you mount your horse and you just kind of like settle into the saddle or on the back of the horse, it just feels like home to me. Like it feels like a very natural position and where I belong. That sounds very cheesy, but I'm gonna go even cheesier and say that the feeling of like doing a flat out gallop across a field 
while I haven't done that like a lot, most of my trail rides or my hacks are fairly like contained. We just walk, trot, canter a little. Um, the few times that you let your horse open up across a field is like flying. It is like the most amazing feeling in the world. So amazing. Man, that's a lot of names. Don Wendelin Webb 98 asks, you mentioned job hunting in a video not long ago. If you could do for a living anything, what career would it be? Ah, uh, let's see. Honestly, being a YouTuber sounds like the ideal lifestyle to me. Like if you watch not just like the big booktubers, but like the big YouTubers in general who can make millions of dollars on this website, that sounds amazing. Like that sounds perfect. You get to work on your own schedule. You get to film wh when you want, how you want. You don't have to answer to anybody and you get huge paychecks from AdSense. That sounds ideal. So I would say either that or running a rescue of an animal. I feel like I've worked in a lot of rescues over the years and I just love it. I can't get enough of it. So ideally I feel like I would love to run a miniature horse rescue. That would be amazing. Like an entire field of mini horses? Yes. Um, Delaney asks, are your animals work animals or pets? They are definitely pets. If I could get Hercules registered as a therapeutic horse to take with me everywhere, I totally would, but I don't want to work the system that way, but they are definitely just spoiled rotten pets. Okay, Sharon has a long question here. It says, Chelsea, I know you have goats, but what other animals do you have and how many of each? And then she goes to list all of her pets. Oh my god, you have so many awesome cats. That sounds awesome. Um, okay, so I have seven. Technically, I have four goats, a miniature horse, a dog, and a cat. I'll definitely introduce you guys in an animal, like, introduction video. That's coming, I promise. But Willa Reed says, if you could sum up your life in about 60 seconds, what would you want us to know? Oh, that's a lot of pressure. Oh man, okay. I guess my life ultimately comes down to horses and books. Those are like my two major passions, or I guess at this point, just animals and books. Um, I've always worked with animals. I love working with animals. Animals are just infinitely better than humans, in my opinion. Um, so very passionate about working with animals, whether it's veterinary work or rescue work or training work, just anything in general, just being around them. Um, and books. I've always been a reader, so that's a thing. I don't know, I guess that's just kind of it. Um, art and design has always been interesting to me. That's essentially what I went to college for. That got me nowhere. Um, but I guess that's kind of what sums up me is animals, books, and design. Those are things that are interesting to me and those are what I'm passionate about. It also says, when did you get your first goat? So about a year and a half ago is when we brought home Neville and Napoleon. They were the first two. Um, without counting your childhood books from that video, which book have you had the longest? Um, I need to find some. I actually didn't include this book in that video because I actually still have it on my shelves. But the book The Music of Dolphins by Karen Hess is possibly one of my favorite books of all time. It's about a girl who um, was essentially raised by a pod of dolphins and gets like found offshore and is brought to like a research center to like learn how to be a human. But it basically starts out in really big words before she like learns how to communicate and as she understands how to communicate with people the writing gets smaller and it's just it's a phenomenal story. So I've probably had this one the longest. Sarah Garcia says, oh man I'm gonna disappoint you a lot in this comment. In your background, I see that you have two of the Shades of Magic books. Do you have the third one and it's just not in frame or you, do you not have it and why? It's unsatisfying to not see all the books together. I personally love the series, so maybe that's why I care more. Okay, yeah, I'm totally gonna disappoint you in this. Um, I only have the first two. I actually just ordered the third one because it is on Book Outlet right now. So I did actually just pick that up, so don't worry, it's coming. They'll all be together. But I've only read the first one and I didn't care for it. I know. Um, I'm going to continue on with it because enough of my book friends who I really trust their judgment says that it's worth continuing on with the series. I liked the first one enough, but not enough to really, really want to carry on with it. I just didn't connect with the characters. I think that Victoria Schwab is amazing at concepts, but I don't think that her writing style is enough for me to stay hooked on her worlds. And I feel like that's very strange. Like I think her ideas that she comes up with in her books are so unique and so creative that I'm so drawn to them, but the execution of them is just something that leaves me wanting more, if that makes sense. So I do have the third one coming. Like it's literally like in the mail coming to my house now. So they will be together and I do plan on reading the second and the third one. 
at some point. But the story asks, what have been your three most recent favorite obscure reads? Oh man, I need to pull up Goodreads for that because whew, I read a good variety of like lesser known books and very hyped books from booktube. So let me look through my most recent ones. I did just talk about Blood and Sand. That's a book that actually came out this year and I think that it is so underhyped. It's a um, gender bent reimagining of Spartacus and it was so well done. I started reading the Red Winter trilogy by Annette Marie. That's actually kind of obscure, but it's kind of somewhat well loved among Sarah J Mass fans, so I recommend that if you haven't done that. Um, okay, a lot of these are super hyped. And Hunted by Megan Spooner, does that count as obscure? I That was a Beauty and the Beast retelling that I think just got swept under the rug, but was really, really well done. Is that three? Did that count as three? Oh, I read The Children's Home by Charles Lampert. Did not care for it, but that's a really obscure book. That's like a weird, small, short, adult fantasy story that tried way too hard to be like a mixture of Every Heart a Doorway mixed with like Chuck Palahniuk mixed with I don't other horror authors and it just kind of failed on all accounts but that's an obscure book that I read recently. Okay moving on. Could you do a Meet My Animals video? Yes! Strawberries Almost Human Diary, you comment on all my videos, I see you girl. Um, asks, where do you see your channel going in the next three to five years, and how do you manage to get physical arcs? Do you have any advice for smaller booktubers to get more recognition? Um, okay, so first part, where do I see my channel going? I hope growing. That's just kind of the plan. Personally, I just kind of hope that I stay as welcomed as I am, because I feel like a lot of people who comment on my videos, like a lot of you guys who watch my videos, are just very welcoming to me into the community. And honestly, the booktube community, it has its drama, but compared to the rest of the internet, this is a very friendly corner to be in. And I just really like being in the community. I I think goals for me are to eventually go to like BookCon or something. I feel like that's like the ultimate goal is to be able to be big enough to get into BEA, to be real. But in the next three to five years, is that plausible? Maybe. We'll see. Um, how do you manage to get physical arcs? I ask for them. Um, I pretty much wait until I reach a point where I'm confident enough in my content to reach out to kind of bigger and bigger publishers. When I first started requesting ARCs, it was very small titles from very small publishing houses, and I've just kind of gotten more confident at it. They can only say no, and that's, or they can just not reply at all. That happens, honestly, quite often. Um, but you basically just kind of learn how to, like, pitch yourself to the publisher and why you deserve to get an ARC. Um, but I basically kind of have like milestones of like subscriber numbers across multiple platforms um, that I think I would like to get to before I reach out to like Penguin or like Harper Teen, just like the bigger names. I just feel like I, once I reach a certain milestone with numbers, I reach out to like the next level of publishers. So that's kind of my advice for that. And do you have any advice for how smaller booktubers can get more recognition? Um, I feel like a lot of the recognition aspect comes from being active in the community, like reaching out to other booktubers who are, in my opinion, okay, this is just kind of the socially anxious part of me. I really like reaching out to people who are in the same range as me, as in the people who have kind of the same number of views and subscribers. So you're in like the same zone and you can relate on a lot of things. So I think that's really, really helpful when you're first starting out. Find other people who started the channel around when you did so you can grow together and bounce ideas off of each other. And I feel like by participating in like readathons where you talk to people and you're active on like Twitter or just like you're willing to interact with people, I feel like is how you get recognition. So that's my advice. Okay, this video is getting very long. So I think I'm actually gonna cut it off there and do a part two. I think I'm literally just gonna like turn off this video and then continue filming and I'll just upload part two tomorrow. So I'll do it back to back days so you guys don't have to miss out on too much. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow? This feels weird. I feel like I don't have an outro for this. Okay, I'll just see you guys in the next video, which will be tomorrow.